Hi, and welcome to IT Chronicles 10 in Tech. We're coming to you from ServiceNow's Knowledge 18 in Las Vegas. I'm Kirsty McGowan. I'm here with my co-host, Carlos Casanova. Hey, Kirsty. How are you, Carlos? And we're talking with Sean Convery today from ServiceNow. Now, your, um, your area of expertise is the security. So That's know, right, what, yeah. what's happening with ServiceNow and security? What's new? What's coming up? What's exciting? Yeah, sure. So we got into the security industry uh, a couple years ago yeah. with this idea that too much time had been spent focusing on detection and yeah. prevention mm -hmm. and not enough time focusing on response. What do you do when the eventual yeah. does happen? Yeah. Right. And so we've been in this market now for a couple of years and uh, the, you know, the mm -hmm. space has been growing. Yeah. You know, our, our customers are getting much more value mm -hmm. out of the product. Uh, right. We've got a lot of customers now in production, yeah. you know, processing security incidents. So think about yeah. the product as really being two main things, right? Yeah. Proactively, how do you make your environment safer? So how do you uh, reduce the number of vulnerabilities mm -hmm. in your environment by working with IT to patch things more aggressively? And then on the incident response mm -hmm. side, how do you respond when something bad does happen? Because yeah. that was a big gap that we saw mm -hmm. in the market was the bad thing happens and then the coordination of the response right. yeah. spent too much time, uh, things were falling through the cracks mm -hmm. and so we, we think we've got a much better approach leveraging the foundations of the ServiceNow platform which gives us all this great workflow capability and, and a great experience. Right, right. Yeah, yeah and obviously the, you know, the security space is, you know, like you said, it's been growing. Um, the demand is is kind of crazy. You yeah, know, I don't think it's ever going to get less. <laughs> no, it's not. And and I think you know with the uh, obviously the AI components, we you know spoke to a bunch of your partners over the last couple of days here at the conference. So they're doing some great things, you know, leveraging you know a lot of the capabilities. And it is a you know an if not an if it's a when you know. So you know I think um, I think we're seeing more organizations recognize and accept that. I think they've been in denial for quite a few years. Um, so tell us a little bit more about you know when that happens. <clears throat> you know we have you know we have your your security operations group. You have your network operations group. Um, I would think with the platform, it's also helping those come back together. That's it. Sounds like what you're talking about is really bringing your you know your uh, ops areas really closer to each other and not letting something slip through. Yeah, this is, that's exactly right. And if you think about it this way, the security team often has very little operational control for the network and the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. right? some, some organizations shift that around a little bit, but in general, sort of assume that everything you do in response to something bad happening is done by IT. So one of the big gaps yeah. was... It's usually, it's usually <laughs> correct, but... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one of the big gaps is that, that security mm -hmm. and IT, I mean, sometimes they don't get along very well, but yeah. they certainly have not historically been on the same platform with the same understanding of systems and information, right. the ability to establish service level agreements, and you know, if you're the CIO and this, I'm the CISO, and I have something bad and I need you to do something mm -hmm. quickly, I need to know, are you gonna do yeah. it in four hours? Can right. I count on you to do it in four minutes? You know, what is that relationship, and then how do we measure that over time? Right, right. Yeah, the um, it's it is an amazing space how quickly it's grown and how uh, diverse it is. Um, <clears throat> you know, and I see that you know, especially when we look at you know, we're pushing the DevOps envelope mm -hmm. now. You know, so those those issues are going to come up. We know that the uh, people doing the breaches are far more sophisticated than they ever were. So time is really of the essence in, in all of these things, right? I mean, we can't allow uh, these known issues. To say, hey, you know, just reboot that server. We're good. Yeah, yeah. you know, so that, you it know, doesn't happen. It doesn't work that way anymore. No, no. So you know, um, what's the what's the breadth that that you're seeing in terms of you know your customers using you know the capabilities now on the platform? Yeah, I mean, so we're into the hundreds of customers mm -hmm. now that yep. are using using the capability. And right. like I said, there's those two main use cases that we're seeing. And you, you you mentioned something interesting just a moment ago. You talked about DevOps and the impact that can have. We were talking about that on the main stage this morning right. here at Knowledge about sort of our own entrance into the, the DevOps space. But from a security standpoint, DevOps actually presents a, a unique opportunity mm -hmm. because now that I'm trying to do continuous software delivery, I'm trying to make things move much faster, well, you can establish gates as I move from my dev environment to my, to my UAT environment, to my production yeah. environment, and, and I can check those things as I move through those stages, which allows me to enforce security and then monitor security using the same tool chain, the same environment that I'm, I'm using the rest of the infrastructure. So it's a, you know, especially for these modern cloud applications, it's an opportunity to start things off right, as opposed to, I think what today many customers would admit, security for on-prem software is thought of as a little bit more like a bolt-on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, um, you know, it's funny. Any of us that have been in the space for, you know, for any length of time, we know that testing is always on the end. Mm -hmm. And sadly, 
security has also been there. Yeah. It's always like, oh, so is it secure? Is it not secure? Uh, you know, and that's one of the things that I, I am seeing in organizations that are much more lean, agile, DevOps, you know, mm -hmm. space. We're talking about pushing that left. You know, we're yeah. talking about pushing those principles left, get it baked into the equation so that it just flows, it flows through. Um, and obviously, you know, you guys have a lot of integrations into those platforms and tools, right, to, to really enable that? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, we have customers that are using uh, code scanning, for example, and they're allowing developers to submit code scanning requests via VR service portal. So mm -hmm. it becomes a, a self-service mm -hmm. model where I, as an application developer, can sort of check my code out before it gets too far in the process. As you mentioned, if, if testing happens at the end and you find all these security issues, mm -hmm. You know, the application developer is not happy. The security person is not happy. The finance person that controls the budgets not happy. The business yeah. owner who wants to ship the application is not happy. So, how do we how do we rethink yeah. that and have security be part of that process? And one of the things that ServiceNow can bring to the table is because we sit at the intersection of IT, the developer, the security team, and now uh, another part of the, the the portfolio that I'm responsible for is governance, risk, and compliance. So increasingly now you can think about this all through a risk mm -hmm. lens, right. which really <coughs> clarifies people's thinking rather than just adding another product, mm -hmm. adding another tool, going to RSA and figuring out what the latest tech is, and then I go buy that. Now I can say, oh, this is my critical service. This is a the, the financial impact of a of a breach or an exposure of personal data yeah. on that service. This is the investment I want to make to try to mitigate that risk. Mm -hmm. That's that's a shift yeah. in the mindset that we're starting yeah, and to I see. Like, yeah, I like that um, that focus on the remediation, the making it right afterwards, because I think companies' reputations now they don't they don't rest so much on whether whether or not you do get breached. They rest on how well you respond to that breach when it happens. I mean, and I think customers too realise that now that it's not so much about whether or not it happens. It's it's what you can do about it. So. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing that from a regulatory standpoint yeah. now with the GDPR, 72-hour yeah. breach reporting requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do think you're right. We, we were in this stage as, a, as an industry where we thought, you know, stopping almost all of the bad yeah. stuff was just, you know, 18 months away. Like, mm. we're, we just got a better algorithm yeah. to, yeah. to detect things. And I think everybody sort of woke up to the reality. The first wake up was, wow, no, like something bad is going to happen. And then the second wake up, which is more recent, was something bad has already happened yes. that I am unaware of, yeah. right? right. And, yeah. and, and once that realization hit, I think everybody's thinking changed. Right. Yeah, yeah. And we, we were speaking with a few of your uh, partners, uh, one in ID management space and um, even some of the HR stuff. And uh, I had done a, a keynote a few years back that it was, I think, about eight months on average before mm -hmm. a breach was detected. He was saying it's still about 99 days. I mean, and, and we think about it, what's going mm -hmm. on in our environment? during 99 days. Passwords sure. are being passed yeah. in clear mm -hmm. text. Credentials are being changed. So, you know, to your point, something happened. How quickly did we respond to that? Yeah. We already know that mm -hmm. on average it's already about three months. Yeah. Are we making it even worse? And how, you know, how can we uh, shorten that, that path? Absolutely. I mean, one of the things that we're, we're seeing also as, a, as another trend is a, a renewed focus on hygiene. Yeah. So you know, sort of the basic mm -hmm. brushing your teeth and flossing in security is yeah. things like patching. Yep. Yeah. Right, so we did a big study with the Ponemon Institute uh, just mm -hmm. a little while back where we surveyed almost 3,000 security professionals about mm -hmm. their vulnerability response program. And we found out you know, some, some, some obvious and some not so obvious mm -hmm. things. On the, on the obvious side, uh, or more obvious, is those that were not breached self-reported 40% more effective vulnerability response programs right. than those that were breached. So it, it really kind of clarified what everybody had kind of assumed is this is the most impactful thing you can do if you want to actually reduce your reduce attack surface area. Yeah. Get better at this. No, yeah. let's hide it because yeah. it'll go away if we hide yeah. it. But some of the staggering statistics, you know, yeah. 12 days wasted per update yep. in manually coordinating the business owner, the application owner, yep. IT, security, compliance, right? 55% of, of the time is spent mm -hmm. Coordinating versus, yeah. versus yeah. I'm sorry, let me correct that. 55% of the respondents said that they spend more time coordinating than they do actually patching. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. So it's 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 a staggering problem, and you know it's not as sexy as sort of making the diving save when the bad guy has found a way right. through your firewall. Right. But it's the yep. thing that actually will 
ensure that if somebody gets through the firewall, there's nothing vulnerable there to, to gain a foothold at. Right, yeah, right. that report really made very interesting reading. It, uh, it was fascinating. Yeah. So the, some of the results were quite surprising. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Scary, yeah, scary, yeah. I was trying to be gentle. Yeah, there. it's it's the real. Well, I think if we keep sugarcoating it, I think we won't we won't correct yeah. it, right? So, yeah. on that note, you know, Sean, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Uh, wish you the best. I mean, I know yeah. that in the security space, there's a lot of sleepless nights. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, great work, and uh, look forward to you know continued uh, progress on it. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you thank both. You. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.